joining us from Los Angeles where he will be hosting the Jim Rome show in just about 55 minutes. We've only got a little bit of time with him because he's got to get into makeup. It's our very own Grant Napier. Hello, Grant. I do have to get into makeup. When you have a face like this, it takes longer than most people. So, yeah, I mean, you know, you got to do what you got to do. How are you? I wouldn't be able to uh, identify with that, Grant. I have what they call a naturally uh, handsome face that would need no makeup whatsoever. Yeah. Yeah, that's a very good point. That's a good point. Uh, how do the cameras in there look on you? I mean, <laughs> they don't zoom in every, do they? I do this thing where I put the microphone between me and the camera and try to hide like 80% of my face so you can just see my eyes. That's my yeah, trick. Yeah, that's good. Well, that's good, man. That's good. Yeah, I, good for you. I, I, rem- I remember the first time I ever uh, saw you carry around one of those mirrors. You got to carry around a mirror because don't – Yeah, not- I have a compact mirror. Yeah, I've, got, I've got it all. I've got it all, absolutely. But you see here – you know, at the Jim Rome show, you know, uh, th- this is big time. You know, yeah. they have their own makeup artist here. Wow. So you sit in a chair and, you know, it's like going to the barber shop. You know, they put that little cover over you and you have, you don't want to get anything on your clothes. Wow. And, uh, yeah, oh, it's big time. Absolutely. Absolutely. Matter of fact, the gal that does the makeup here specializes in uh, weddings. And so she okay. does a lot of weddings. So, you know, I'm thinking, wow, okay, you know, let's see. Let's see. She can make brides look beautiful. I know she can't do anything for me, but let's see how good she is. She's actually... You know, what what can I tell you guys? You know, um, <laughs> makeup is is not the most enjoyable thing in the world. I can tell you that it's probably the least. As a matter of fact, it's not the least. It's the worst thing about being on TV mm-hmm. is when you have to put makeup on. Kyle, you can relate to that, can't you, buddy? Oh, Kyle, I absolutely. know Dave can't, but I know Kyle can. Yeah, yeah, definitely, of course. Absolutely. Hey, yeah. hey did you get to keep that? Uh, did you get to keep that uh, sport jacket you wore yesterday? Uh, no, I gave it back to my producer because I wanted to make sure that uh, I was not responsible for any damage to that jacket. Because, you know, fortunately, we get a chance to wear it again tomorrow for the Rockets game. Oh, you do? Oh, yes, oh. absolutely. This is not just a this is not just a, a one-day deal. I get okay. to wear it again on Tuesday. So i got to figure out what color shirt I want to wear tomorrow. You know, um, i I gotta, yeah. I got to do it right because this will be the last time I wear it this year. Hey, Grant, you don't anticipate just kind of wearing it out and about during the offseason? I, I, I may, as long as the weather doesn't heat up too much. I wouldn't sure. want to wear good that point, out yeah. in the in the hut. But you know, I am going to Scotland in June, and I'm mm-hmm. thinking that might look good on the golf course there because it's definitely going to be a little cool uh, at the end of June in Scotland, in all likelihood. And that might be a good look over there. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I'm not going to say I'm a little disappointed you're not wearing it today on the Jim Rome show, but I'm not going to say I am either. You know. Well, uh, it's the, the, I was thinking about it, but the problem is I don't think that the folks at CBS Sports Net <laughs> and CBS Sports Radio True. would appreciate an NBC jacket on the air. Now, I'm, I, I'm just thinking that That's that could be point. a possibility. That could be, I could be wrong. I could be wrong. Great name if you're joining us from L.A. He's going to be on the uh, hosting the Jim Rum Show uh, at 9 a.m. Grant, if I, I was just saying, if we'd uh, told you two months ago that the Kings – would beat the San Antonio Spurs yesterday. A lot of us uh, looking at that schedule, you and I included, thought that might be high noon when it came to uh, whether or not the Kings make the playoffs. And I'll tell you something, dude. Uh, every single thing pointed to the Kings losing that game by double digits yesterday, and that's just not the way sports works. I thought we were going to get blown out. I told a couple of people uh, that I thought we were going to get blown out. I just had a bad feeling about the game. End of a road trip, played the night before. The Aaron had logged tons of minutes, so did Buddy. I just thought that, you know, without Bagley and, you know, still no Giles, there wouldn't be enough energy. I thought the Kings were going to lose by 15 or 20 points, yep. and especially when they fell down by 10 early. I'm like, oh, my gosh, get my fill out and fill up, you know, or the, the we, we call it the fill material, you know, because you're like, okay, game's going to be over at halftime, so you still got to hold your audience in the second half, and what are you going to talk about? So I was already thinking about that in the middle of the first quarter uh, when they were down by 10. You know what's amazing is that the Kings beat the – they're 6-1 and one this year against the Thunder – uh, and the Spurs. Wow. Think about that for a minute. Wow. Right? I mean, and if I told you that the Kings are going to go 6-1 and one at the beginning of the year against the Thunder and the Spurs, well, you would have sent me somewhere. You know, you would have said, okay, you're not fit to be on the air anymore, which, you know, a lot of people think anyway. But think about that. 6-1 <laughs> and one against the Spurs and the Thunder. Uh, I was just – I was maybe as impressed yesterday uh, almost as much as, as any time this year because, I mean, they're – the night before, they were officially eliminated from the playoff race. They had played against a very up-tempo Rockets team. They had all played big minutes. 
and they're playing against a team that beat them has lost. You know, they they beat twice. You got Greg Popovich, who you know darn well yep. that Pop was saying, "Hey, we can't let this team beat us three times." So I, I was really impressed with what I saw yesterday. And then, you know, once again, you know, uh, I think Greg Popovich is is as respected as any coach in the NBA. I put him right at number one of all the active coaches in the NBA. Oh, yeah. I don't think you put anybody above him. And once again, after the game, he's just raving about the Kings and what they've done and their future and their players. And that's the third time this year that Pop has been unbelievably complimentary about the Sacramento Kings. And I take that and I'm like, okay, you know, we, we, we can say what we want here in Sacramento. And, and there were many of us, oh, gee, you're homers. You're just saying that. When a guy like Greg Popovich comes out and says that when he doesn't have to, that's great validation. All the things you said, plus be elites, it was coming off the stomach illness, which knocked Marvin Bagley out. No Harry Giles because of the bruise. Third game in four nights, back to back, final game of a long road uh, trip. So let me ask you, as a fan, and I know you're a fan as well, do games like yesterday frustrate you because we lose to the Pelicans and 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 Nets, or do they uh, encourage you? Because a team that, quote-unquote, really has nothing to play for, what the day after they get eliminated from the playoffs, uh, manages to pull it together in a, in, a, in a pretty big heart situation considering the Spurs went ahead at home late in the game. Yeah, it doesn't really depress me because this team is light years ahead of where I thought they would be as we turn the calendar at April 1st. And I look at the big picture. I don't really look at one game here and one game there. I just look at the totality of the season. And I don't care who you are. I don't care whether you're the Warriors or you're the Raptors or you're the Bucks or you're the Nuggets. You're going to have good wins during the year and you're going to have bad wins. And you're going to have teams that you lose to that you shouldn't lose to. And it happens with every team in the league. So, no, I don't, I don't look at it as a, as a frustration. I actually look at it this way. Last night's win ensures the Kings barring an absolute unforeseen collapse at home against Cleveland and New Orleans, and I'm not even talking about the other games, sure. of a 40-win of a season. Can, now, now think about this, okay? Take us back to October 16th, October 17th, right before the opener, which I think was on the 18th. Listen to your radio show. Listen to my radio show. Listen to anyone else around the country. Can you imagine if we had gone on the air and said the Kings were going to win 40 or more games? No, but drive test. Drug right. test and but suspension. Where, but, right, okay. So even with everything you just said about the, you know some of the bad losses, mm-hmm. and they have, but they've also had some wins that they shouldn't have won, this team's going to, and again, I'm projecting this. I mean, I could be wrong. They're going to win at least 40 games this year. Think about that for a minute. They're going to win at least 40 games this year. That's, and yeah. that, to me, is I give this team, they have so overachieved. And maybe they haven't really overachieved. Maybe we did not give enough credit to the young players. And I thought the team would be a lot better than, than many. Uh, I didn't think the Kings were going to be in the low twenties. I thought that they were going to be trending at 30. Doug thought they needed to be trending towards 40, but he didn't think they would win 40. This nucleus is finally here. We've waited and waited and waited. This is not like, well, gee, this is a phony year. This is, no, this is a team that now has their nucleus. They're going to add to it. They've got their core, the foundation core, whatever you want. And now they're, they're ascending and everyone in the league knows it. And barring injury, I don't see any way in the world. This team's not a perennial playoff team. And I believe in the very near future, not next year, but in the near future, and I'm talking two or three years, there is no question. Again, I'm going to go back and say, barring serious injury, I think the Kings will be an upper echelon team and will be competing with the best teams in the league. Got to wrap up with Grant Napier. He's got to get in the chair. Uh, Grant, uh, I'll share a little bit of this on the air. You missed a call from me last night. I think you were in the air. Uh, remember when we talked yesterday morning? You were saying that uh, you had a long day. You had to, you, you were going to study up because you were you were working a lot of the weekend. You had to study up on your college basketball. You always want to make sure yeah. you're prepared. You remember when I said, hey, you know, worst case scenario, just do what I do and, and bring a guest on. And I won't say the names of the guests I threw out, but I'll just say that I threw out a couple uh, maybe BC level guests that, that taught college basketball at you. And I want to say you did a great job at not at not making me feel terrible because when I said that, I totally forgot you were hosting Rome this morning. I thought you were hosting like your show here this morning or this afternoon, and that's why I threw that out. So if you thought I was being stupid yesterday morning, that's why I was just confused. You actually have great guests on this morning. Well, just so you know, um, I don't think in all the years that I've known you, you've ever talked, and I said to myself, boy, Dave really seems confused. I mean, that doesn't happen 
more than 15, 20 times a week, you know? So, you know, don't worry about it. I think we're, I think you and I are on the same page, dude. You know, I think we're on the same page. Oh, uh, John Ross. And, you know, it's funny about college basketball yeah. because I don't watch as much as I would like to. Right. But I will say this past weekend of the Elite Eight, maybe as good as, as I've yep. ever seen. Yep. And – if not, it's got to be in the top two or three in the last 30. I mean, you can go back and maybe go back to Magic and Bird and that whole era. Sure. I don't ever recall an Elite Eight weekend like this. Do you? Nope, not at all. And we were talking about that. I don't know about all the buzzer beaters and crazy Cinderella stories, but the fact that we have Texas Tech uh, and Auburn, nobody thought that was going to happen. Yep. Uh, you have, as Auburn went through all those blue bloods, Kansas, Kentucky, and North Carolina, and we've had these close finishes the whole way. I think it's been a hell of an entertaining tournament. Yep. And, and it's you, been unbelievable. So, yeah, I'll be talking about it for the whole first hour. John Rothstein actually is coming on with me at uh, 9.35. He's Mr. College Basketball from CBS Sports, CBS Sports Net, and WFAN in New York. So uh, no one knows more than he does, in my opinion. I love listening to him, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be – I really can't wait to hear how he breaks this down because I don't know how anyone would break this down other than to say it was a phenomenal weekend. I'll tell you what else it did. It was a huge weekend, in my opinion, for college basketball because I think the level of play in college basketball – has been down. It has not been as entertaining as it used to be because of the one and dones and everything else. This was a big, big weekend for college basketball. Uh, in addition to John Rothstein, uh, our good friend Chris Landry will be on. Steve Sands will be uh, probably talking about the match play over the weekend and previewing the Masters next week, and our very own Sam Amick as well. Uh, all on the Jim Rome Show, hosted by Grant Napier today, starting at about 45 minutes. Buddy, we always appreciate you joining us, especially today. you got a lot of stuff yep. to do. Make us proud as always. Hey, listen, I'm expecting you uh -huh. to look at me when we come on at 9, yep. and I want you to send me a message about how good I look, okay? Oh, dude, I'll, I'll, I'll be looking at the hair. That's important to me. The hair, the makeup, the whole deal. In fact, yep. I'm going to text your wife first. We're going to commiserate. We're going to come yep. up with a rating, and then I'm going to text you your grade. Okay. I appreciate that, buddy. Have a great day. I'll see you soon. <laughs> see you, dude. Bye. That's great, Napier. You're listening to The Drive.